our API is coming along great, but in a real world project, typically we do not interact with the database tier directly. Like in the API, we are modifying with data directly within the API itself. An ideal approach is to have a repository and let that repository manage everything related to data. In order to get started with the repository, inside our project, let's add a new folder and we will call that repository. Inside that folder, we will add another folder for i repository. That will be the interface and then the repository will implement whatever we want. So let me first add the interface right here. We will name it i villa repository. Inside repository, what will be all the methods? First will be to create a villa. We want to make it async. So we will have task as the return type here. And when we create, we will be passing the villa entity. When we work with the repository, making all the changes like converting villa DTO to villa or villa create DTO to villa will be done inside the API controller. The data layer, we will directly interact with the villa entity that we have. So we have create, then we have remove where we will get the complete villa Based on that, we will remove. Next, if we go back to our API, whenever we are adding something, we have to save the changes. So inside our repository, let me also add a method to save the changes. Finally, if we go back, we need something to retrieve an individual villa or if we have to retrieve list of all the villas. Now, when we are retrieving an individual villa, we have some condition that you can see right here. This is basically a link expression and it is defined on this villa entity that we have. If we want to add something similar inside the repository, return type will be list of villa. We will name it get all and let's say we want to filter out based on some condition like some link statement. So in that case, we will add expression here. We will press control dot or link dot expression and this will be a function on the class which is villa and we will call that as filter this can be null as well perfect so that looks good for get all let me copy and paste that next what if we want just one villa so the return type will be task of villa we will have the same function here but on top of that, if we go back where we were doing patch, let me scroll down. We also wanted some situation where we wanted to enable the as no tracking. For that, we will add a parameter here and let me call that boolean tracked and by default, this will be true. Perfect. That looks good. With that, our I repository, which is the interface looks good next we need to implement this interface we have the interface for villa repository let's implement that inside the repository folder we will add a new class here let's call that villa repository let me add that and this will implement i villa repository we will press control dot add the using statement and then press control dot again to implement that interface. I have a spelling mistake in the repository, so let me modify that before we proceed further. Perfect. We will be working with our DB context, so we will have to add application DB context using dependency injection. Once we inject that, what will happen when we create? We have underscore db dot villas dot add async and we will add the entity that we have. After we create, we do need to save the changes. Let me await this as well. And let me scroll down where we have save here. We will say await underscore db dot save changes asynchronous. So once we create the entity, let's save them. 
perfect next we have the remove that is straightforward let me copy this paste it here and rather than add async we have remove we do not have a weight there and we will add async tag there perfect next we need the get as well as get all let me first work on get all here we will be working on i queryable which will be on villa let's call that query and we will have that with db.villas now when you work with i queryable it does not get executed right away so we can build on this query where we will say query.where and we will add the filter so the filter that we received in the parameter if we have them we will populate them right here so we'll say query is equal to query dot where and we will apply the filter that we only want to apply if filter is not null so we'll say if filter is not null only then we will apply the filters we have an error here because when we are using the expression function we will have the in and out here so let's say the output will be a boolean we forgot to add that here so along with villa we do comma the output result that can be a boolean once we modify that right here we will add a boolean and we will have filter with that we will be able to apply the filter that looks good we will make the same change right here but perfect so now whatever filter we have here if that is not null then we will apply that on the query right here and finally we will convert that to a list and we will send that back we will have to add the async keyword and that looks good so here we are getting all of the villa but if you want you can still apply some filters on the villas as well next we want to get the individual villas we will copy what we added for get all on top of that we need to consider if the query is tracked or not so right here if the query does not needs to be tracked then we will add as no tracking we cannot use the dot to list async because this expects a single villa so rather than that we will use first our default async finally we need to async and that looks good so with that we have implemented a generic repository for the villa that we have let's continue from the next video now we have divided things in repository so it makes sense to use that rather than using the db context directly in the villa api controller before we inject repository in place of application db context right here we need to register that in program.cs so right here we will add a scoped reference of the iVilla repository the implementation will be inside villa repository that looks good now we can inject the villa repository right here so rather than application db context we will get the iVilla repository let's call that the db villa right here and underscore db villa is equal to db villa here we will just say underscore db villa dot we don't need the do list async we have to get all we scroll down where we have the first dot default we will say underscore db villa dot get and we want to get based on the condition so the filter is the same that we have here but that will retrieve only one record that looks good now before i'm making these changes we have the async method so it makes sense to call our method async as well that way they are more meaningful perfect we change that right here as well and great the errors went away 
we need save async and perfect so here we will have the get async get all async let's scroll down where we are creating we need db villa dot get async and we have the condition where we have the create here we will say underscore db villa dot create async and we pass the model we will await that perfect that looks good let me modify this as well and we will copy this paste it for remove async it will be villa here and then we have update we forgot to add the update here let's do that real quick we will have the update async we will get the villa entity and let me implement that as well we will copy this paste it here we have the update here and we need async perfect that is done let's update here underscore db villa dot update async we will update the model and we will await there looks good finally we have the update partial or patch so right here we will have the underscore db villa dot get async this time the tracked flag will be false we do not want it to be tracked we scroll down we have the update here await underscore db villa dot update async and we have our model perfect that looks good let me run and test everything right here let's try the get here that works let's try post here that worked the new id is 10 here let me try to retrieve that and perfect that is working let me also try delete right here everything else should work as well 204 looks good we go back to database and perfect we do not have that so with that we have tested most of the features here and everything seems to work with our new repository let me continue with the repository in the next video now we have one controller in our api which is villa api controller and for that we have one repository villa repository but when we add more models to our project and we will have multiple controllers we will also have multiple repository with that what will happen is each repository will have some duplicated code like get async or get all async if the functionalities are exactly the same why don't we have something common that way we don't have to rewrite this code every time for that we will implement a generic repository and then our repository will use that generic repository to get started inside the i repository let me first stop the application add a new class here which will be an interface and i will call that i repository let me go to the i villa repository and copy everything that we have there and i will paste it right here actually let me copy everything other than update reason i do not like to put update inside the generic repository is when we are updating something it is very likely possible that the logic for one update will be different from the other one unless we are using what we have here which is the generic update like this but in real world project updates are typically not the same so we will keep them inside the ivilla repository like this now the i repository will not be limited to just villa model 
So that will be on a generic class. So for that we will have generic defined here as t and we can say where t will be a class. So rather than villa here we will have generic which will be type of t. Let me replace that in all the places here and perfect. When we are getting it is possible that filter is null so we can add a nullable there if we want. But perfect this looks good. Let me save this and we will implement the repository as well. Inside the repository folder we will add a class which will be repository. Let's add that. We will go to our Villa repository and let me copy everything that we have here so far along with the application db context and I will paste that in the repository class. This will implement the i repository. We will add the using statement. That looks good. Now the repository will also be on the generic class. So we can define that in both the places for the i repository as well as repository. Both will be on type t where t is a class. The constructor name here will be repository and that looks good. Now here you notice we are working on underscore db dot villas. This villas here is nothing but a db set. So rather than that we can create an internal db set here on type t and let me call that as db set. Right here we can set this dot db set is equal to underscore db dot set and we will set that based on the type t that we have. So if we say this is on villa, then the db set will be the villas by default. So rather than using underscore db dot villas, we can directly use db set dot add async. And here we will be adding the entity. So this will be t and not villa. Perfect. Create async looks good. Let me replace villa with the generic type in all the places. We don't need the update here, we can remove that. Where we have underscore db dot villas, we will be using db set here. Perfect. Let me update that in the other places as well. And perfect. With this, I believe everything looks good here. And great. We don't have any errors, but inside the i repository, I believe we have the update. Let me remove that and perfect. The error should go away. Great, that's done. So with that we have implemented the generic repository. Now we can go to Villa repository and we can remove everything else. We'll just keep update and the application db context. Now on the Villa entity we have the updated date so that we can update when we are updating here and we do not have the save async anymore so we will await underscore db dot save changes async and that looks good let me go to the iVilla repository and right here let's say we want to return the villa that is updated as well if we do that we can return back here the entity and this will be on task of villa and perfect update async looks good now we need to use the repository inside the villa repository so first where we have the interface we will add here the i repository and here we can define the class which is villa so perfect when we have the villa repository the i repository will be on the model which is villa and that sounds good next we have the villa repository Right here, along with the i repository, we need the repository and the class will be villa, comma, we also need the i villa repository. Now the application db context that we receive here, we need to pass that to repository because that also expects a db context. So right here, we can pass that on to the base class 
and perfect that looks good right here i have a warning and that has to do with filter and not nullable so let's go to the i repository inside the get all right here this could be null let's add that and we also added nullable in the get async get async typically will not be null because we are retrieving only one record so there has to be some condition so get all async can be null let's go to repository we will add the same right here let's see perfect the warning goes away now our villa repository you can see it is so clean it does not have much methods these methods are implemented inside the repository let me run this and we can test everything once again get works here post let's try that that works the id 11 is created here let's try to get the 11 that also works and let me try to update that perfect we have 204 no content let's go back and we have one here that's perfect let me try to delete let's go back and refresh here and perfect so all the operations are working successfully but this time our repository is so much better than what we started with our villa api controller is using the villa repository but you can notice for individual methods like let's say get here it returns an i enumerable of villa dto for post here it returns a single villa dto for delete it does not return anything just no content and so on so every time the response that is being returned is in a different format now even though that works for the situation in a real world scenario typically what happens is api will return one standard response and that response will have multiple properties like what is the status are there any errors if everything is successful what is the model and so on that way everything is consistent how can we accomplish that thing with our api for that inside our models we will have to create one more class which will be the response of the api so let me call this api response now think about what will be all the properties that will be returned right here the first one here is what is the status code is it a 204 is it a 200 okay is it a 201 created at 404 not found etc so we will return the type which will be http status code and we will call that status code next property is whether everything was successful or not so we will have a boolean is successful and if in case it was not successful what are the error messages and we will add them in a list and finally when we are getting all the object or when we are updating we have to return some data all of that will be inside an object of result that way all of our api responses can use the standard api response and everything will be much more organized so with that let me close everything else here and let's continue from the next video i have added the class api response and that will be the default return type on our api so right here let me add a protected api response and i will say this dot underscore response is equal to new so all the return type will be underscore response now we will start with the get all here it will not be i enumerable anymore it will be just api response here once everything is good here we need to populate underscore response dot result is equal to and that will be the model that we have here perfect and we will say underscore response dot 
we have the status code that is equal to HTTP status code dot OK. Let me add the using statement here. And perfect. That looks good. We can return OK here. That's OK. But we will be returning underscore response. Let's copy the API response. That will be the return type for get villa as well. And let's copy these three lines actually. And we will paste that right here. This will be a single villa DTO. And it will be villa right here. Perfect. That looks good. Let's copy the API response here. The return type for create villa will be API response. Copy these three lines and go to the end where we are returning back. We will paste that here. The result here will be inside model that we have here. But let me change that to be villa here to be consistent and perfect. So we create that. We have the result here. Status code. We will change that to be created here. And then rather than OK, if you want to return created at route, that is completely OK. This will be villa.id, but the return model that will be here will be underscore response. That way, we are returning the API response, and that looks good. Moving along, we have the delete villa. Here also, the return type will be API response. So we will change that from I action result to action result. Then rather than returning no content here, we will have the status code as no content and we can return OK. That looks good. Let's move ahead and update Villa. Return type will be API response. Once we update everything here, we can have the status code as no content. Success will be true and we'll return back OK with the response here. Next, what we have is update partial. Now we will not be consuming this in our endpoint, so if you want, you can update that, but I will leave it as is for now. So perfect, we have updated everything else right here. One thing that I do like is if there are any errors here, I want to incorporate that in a try catch block. So right here, we will add a try block. We will not close it here. At the end here, we will close that. So when we close it, we add a catch block. We will say is success is false and we will add the error message as well. Finally, return back the response. So we will copy this thing and we will add try catch in all the places. And perfect, that looks good. We will align everything, control A and control KD. Let me build the project and make sure there are no errors. That looks good. Another thing that you can do is where we have the bad request, you can add the response right here. So we will copy this and we will append the status code here, which will be bad request. And we can pass underscore response like that. That is something that you can play around and update in all the places if you want. I just wanted to show you that you can do that. That way, whatever we return back, we still have the model. But what we have so far looks perfectly fine to me. We are returning API response. Let's run the project and see this in action. Perfect, the schemas here, you see we have API response here, that looks good. Let's get the API and see if that works. Perfect, we have the status code of 200, its success is false. What I will do is by default, I will set the is success to be true. So in here, we will set this to be true, but if we run into any error message, we will of course set that to be false. 
So let me do that again. We have is success as true, status quo 200, and in the result, we have all of the villa. That is great. Let's try to post again. Let's see. Perfect. We get 201 here. The ID is 12 right here. That looks good. Let's try get again for 12. And perfect. That is working. Before I delete this, let me try to update. I will add 1212. Let's execute that. Go back to our database and we can validate that right here. Perfect. Looks good. Let me delete that. And 204. Great. So everything is working as expected. But now we have a standard response, which is the API response that we added. And with that, our API is looking much more professional. Now we have completed one API endpoint, which is Villa API controller. It's time for you to practice the same thing with Villa number. That will be the next API that we will work on. And once you practice that, I will show you additional features that we will add on that API. But for that to be consistent, I will create the model for Villa number. So inside our models, we will add a class. I will call that villa number. Now in our fictionary resort, we have multiple villas. The type of villa that we have is defined by the villa class that we added, where it defines multiple properties of different villas that we have. But each villa will have a number as well. And that number will be defined in the villa number class. So here the first property that we need is a villa number let's call that villa no on top of that let's say there are some special requirement in some villa number like it is handicap accessible or something like that to store those details we will have a string of special detail and we will have created and updated date now this villa number will be primary key for the table so let me add that but this villa number will not be an identity column because typically in a villa you see 101, 102 or numbers like that. You do not see them incrementing in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So villa number is something that user can enter but we have to make sure that that is a unique key. We tell here that it is a primary key but it is not identity. So we have to define that it will be database generated, but database generated option will be none. We do not want database to generate this. Villa number will be something that is provided by the user. So we have to add that right here. Now typically Villa number will be associated with the Villa API, but we will worry about that later on. Right now, I only want you to perform CRUD operation on this villa number. It is pretty straightforward, exactly similar, well, almost exactly similar to what we did with the villa API controller. But before I let you do that, I will help you with the DTOs as well. We can copy the villa DTO, paste it one more time here. We will call that villa number DTO. And inside the villa number DTO, we will have only two properties, villa number, which will be required, and special details. Now this time, the create and update for villa number DTOs will be exactly the same because we have to provide the ID, which is villa number, when that is being created. So we have villa number create DTO, and we have villa number update DTO. Now you might be thinking, let me copy this villa number DTO and paste it right here. We have to change the class name. We'll get back to that in just a second. This is villa number update DTO and this is villa number create DTO. 
looks good we have three dto's here and all of them are exactly the same with that you might have a question that because all of them are exactly the same why don't we use villa number dto well we can technically do that but think about this for a second what if down the road you have some requirement that changes and because of that now your create is different as compared to update then you will have to break down things and it will be a tedious task but if you have planned for that uh, but if you already have a plan for that and you separate them out then making those changes will be super simple that is why it is always a good approach to keep the dto separate with this basic configuration now you have the now you have the code to yourself i want you to implement the crud operations what i mean by that is you need to create the api controller if you do not have the patch endpoint in there that is okay if you want to add that you can add that for practice but i want all the other endpoints to be implemented and in the next video i will share the checklist that you have to complete so good luck with your assignment now we have to do our assignment and in there we have the following points first we need to create table for the villa numbers in our database let's get started with that let me switch back here and let me close everything right now we will work with application db context right here we have the db set for villas we need to add a db set for villa number as well we will call that villa numbers because that is the table name that we want in our database once we do that we need to add migration to push this table so we'll say add migration add villa number to db perfect we are creating that right here that looks good let me run the command update database and that will create the table i will go back to sql server and let me just validate that perfect we have villa number here that is great let's go back to our assignment and the second point is to add the villa number repository let's work on that we can copy the iVilla repository, paste it one more time, as well as the Villa repository. We will change the name here to be Villa number repository and iVilla number repository. Perfect. Let me copy the name iVilla number and paste it here. This will be on Villa number. Let's modify that and the interface looks good. Let's go to the villa number repository. Everywhere we will have to change to villa number. Let me copy that and I will replace that. Rather, let me just copy number here and I will paste that in all the places. When we are updating, it will be villa numbers here. Update looks good. Perfect pretty straightforward with the repository now when we add the repository we have to register that in dependency injection so let's add that interface will be i villa number repository implementation is in villa number repository let's build this to make sure we don't have any errors and that looks good so perfect with that let's go back and finally we have to add the villa number controller for all the restful endpoints let's go back here we can copy the villa api controller paste that and we will rename that to be villa number api now ideally when you are working with all of the assignment you should avoid the copy and paste build everything from the scratch that way you will gain the experience of building the controller but right now we have the villa number api controller let me copy the name here let's go back and we will paste that we are working on the villa number api controller here the route will be villa number api let me copy number again here and we will paste that in the desired places 
When we work with the villa number API, we need the villa number repository. So underscore db villa number, let's call that. And perfect. Looks good. Let's scroll down and continue working here. Villa number here. We will basically have to change everywhere to be villa number rather than villa. So let me do that. And perfect, I believe the HTTP get looks good. We are calling get villa numbers here, villa number list, and yep, that looks good. Next, the name, we will change that to be get villa number. We have the get villa number. Let me remove all the comments here. I don't want the duplicate code. And let me open the villa number model here. Villa number is integer, so that looks good. If that is zero, that is a bad request. Get villa numbers here. We don't have the ID here. We have the villa number. So that is what we will be using here. The parameter here, we will leave that as ID to be consistent, but we know the ID for this table is villa number. So we will compare that. This will be villa number DTO, and we will call this as villa number to be consistent. That looks good. Let's scroll down where we have the create. This will be create villa number. Villa number create DTO. We have added that. Underscore DB villa number. We do not have the name here, but you can check the villa number to be consistent. So if the villa number exists, we will return custom error villa number already exists looks good this will be villa number let's scroll down underscore db villa number and villa number dot we have the villa number perfect that looks good let's scroll down further we have the delete villa number let me see i modified the name we did not have that here that looks good delete villa number and it will be villa number we will modify the variable name here and that looks good perfect delete also looks good now we have the update let's modify that the dto we have the villa number update dto perfect we receive the id here and if that is not equal to the villa number it is a bad request. We have villa number in all the place. Let me modify that again. And this looks good. Finally, we have the patch here. You can practice patch if you want, but I will skip that. And we have all the CRUD operations functional right here. Now let me remove all the comments right here. We do not need those to make our API much cleaner. Perfect. Perfect. With that in place, let's run the project and test everything that we added. Perfect. The API endpoint is available here. Let's try to create. Try this out. We need villa number. Let me make it 101. Special details. That's fine. Let me execute that. We scroll down and we get an error. Of course, we forgot the auto mapper. So let's close that and we need to add the mappings in the mapper configuration. We will copy all of the mappings that we have here. We need to perform same mappings but for villa number. Let's copy number here, villa number DTO. And let me just do reverse map. I do not need this line. And we will change the names here to villa number create and update. Let's run the project one more time here. Let's try the post. Villa number as 101 and 101 string. Let's execute. We scroll down. Perfect. We get a 201 here and we have the API response that is created. If we go back here and if we execute this, great. That looks good. Let me create one more 102. 
and perfect post looks good let's try to get here we get both of them let me try the individual one id 102 here and that works we go down we have the put here try that 102 villa number 102 update that to be all two here response is 200 if we go back here perfect that is updated let's scroll down where is the delete let me try that i will delete 102 we get the 200 and if we go back here that is gone now if we go back to the api 200 is undocumented because we initially wanted to return 204 here but since everything is valid we will change that to be 200 as well let's scroll down i believe i saw that in delete and update so right here we will say 200 okay and perfect that looks good where we have the delete we will also say 200 okay great let me stop the changes and save everything that we have with that our assignment looks good and we are able to perform all the CRUD operations on villa number as well let me continue further from the next video we are able to perform the CRUD operations on villa number as well but now if we take a look at the database we have the villas and we have villa number but we don't have any mapping or relation between the villa number what typically will be the scenario is we have our villas here let me paste that in a single query and execute both of them now for royal villa we will have certain room numbers for premium pool villa we will have few room numbers so basically there needs to be some relation and it will be one too many for one villa here we will have multiple villa numbers so inside the villa number here we need to add a foreign key to the villa and that will have villa id right here how do we add that using entity framework core that is pretty simple let me show that i will close all the tabs here and let me open the villa and villa number model inside the villa number here we need to add a column which will be villa id but this id will be a foreign key to the id in the villa table how can we tell entity framework core that this is a foreign key to the villa table we have the key annotation that you saw here similarly we have something called as foreign key when we add foreign key here we need to add a navigation property for the villa id so right here we will create a navigation property this villa id is the foreign key to the villa class that we have so this will be on villa and i will call that as villa as well when we add foreign key here we need to define the name as you can see and this name will be the name of the foreign key mapper that we added so that name is villa we can copy that and paste it right here that will create the villa id in villa number table but it will add that as a foreign key reference to the villa table that is all that we had to do with that we need to add a new migration because we changed something inside the entity models so we will add a migration we will call that add foreign key to villa table let's add that if you notice the migration here it is adding the column then it is updating the date of created date because we have that on the data seed but we can comment that once we create the record so that every time it does not update the date time to the new record that's okay for now but the main thing here is it is creating an index and it is creating the foreign key that we wanted the principal table is the villas table principal column is the id inside the villas table that is great and we have the referential action as cascade that means if the villa is deleted it will also delete the corresponding records if you want no action you can of course modify that 
right here. But this looks good. We will change that to be update database. As soon as we do that, we will run into an error message. Great, you can see here an alter statement conflicted with the foreign key constraint. Can you think of the reason why we get this error message? It is a little tricky, so try to think about that. Let me switch back to the database here and we are adding the column villa id inside the villa number. But there is one record here. What will be the villa id of this record? It does not know. It will try to insert null here and that does not exist in the villa table. So it get confused and because of the validation that this villa id cannot be empty, it must be a foreign key to the villa table. It gives us that error message. So to fix that, we have to delete the villa number right here. So let me just say delete from villa number. We'll delete everything. Perfect. If we do select star, villa numbers is empty now. And then if we try the same migration again with the command update database, it will work this time. So perfect, that is functional. If we execute this, we should have the new column. We need to do select star here. And great, we have the villa ID right here. That was a tricky error message, but I wanted to exclusively show that. That way you understand on why certain errors occur and how to fix them. So with that, we have added foreign key reference to our villa number table right here. Let's continue from the next video. We have added the foreign key reference in the villa number model. But we need to update same things inside the DTO as well. That way when we perform the CRUD operation, villa number or rather villa ID will be the required field. Let me copy the villa ID here. We will open the villa number create. Here we will add villa ID and that will of course be a required field. We will copy this, paste it in the villa number DTO and villa number date DTO. With that, let me run the application and I will test the villa number CRUD operations once again. Let me switch back to the database and inside the villas table, we have few villas, one to seven. Let's use that. So we want to create the villa number. Let me post that. Try this out. Villa number, let me give it 101. The villa ID will be one here. Let's create. Let's scroll down. We get 201. That's perfect. Now, if the villa ID is invalid, like nine, we only have one to seven in the database. Let me see what happens. We get the custom error villa number already exists. Let's change that and execute this. We scroll down and we get an error message. The error message is not that descriptive. We get the foreign key constraint and it failed. How can we make this more meaningful? Let me open the villa number API controller here and where we are creating the villa. Right here we need to check if the villa ID that we receive is that a valid ID or not. To check that, we will have to go to the villa table and check if a record exists for that ID. And for that, we will have to inject the villa repository. Let me call that underscore villa and add that with dependency injection. When we are creating, we will have a validation here and we will say if we will have to await on underscore db villa dot get async. We want to see if a record exists for you dot id is equal equal to what is our model create dto dot we have the villa id. If that is null, if that is null, that means that the villa id is invalid. So we can add model error here with the custom error villa id is invalid and return back bad request. We will copy the same thing here and paste it inside update villa. So right here we will paste that and this will be on update DTO. 
Let me try to run this one more time. Let me try posting here. We will enter an invalid villa ID. And let's see what happens. Great, now we get the custom error. Villa ID is invalid. So perfect, that looks good. Let me try to get all the villa number here. And perfect, we retrieve ours. Now when we have to retrieve it based on the ID, we need villa number 101. Let me try that. So right here, I will enter 101. We retrieve that. If we enter something else, we get 404 not found. Let me try put here before we try to delete that. So we have the ID 101 here. We will change the villa number, which is 101. Let me update the villa ID of that to, let's say, 3. And let me execute. We get 200. Where we have the get. Where is that? Get all here. Villa ID previously was 1. And now it is updated to 3. So perfect. Let me try delete here. We have the ID 101 and 200 OK. If we try get all again, it will be empty. That is perfect. Let me try posting here to create it once again because we will need that. And 201. Perfect. So we can see all the CRUD operation with our Villa number API are working as expected.